The first half of the 20th century was characterized by confrontation, Nationalistic self-interests, isolationist sentiment, and beggar-thy-neighbor trade policies stoked global economic instability, poverty, and depression, and ruinous conflicts among the world's powers. The destruction of World War II demanded a united response to rebuild. In 1944, 730 delegates from 44 allied nations congregated in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire to determine a path forward for sustained global economic prosperity and stability. The institutions established by the Bretton Woods Conference, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund were the hallmarks of this multilateral system. In the post-Bretton Woods era, the world experienced unprecedented growth and prosperity from the Marshall Plan to the economic boom of the 1950s and the expansion of multilateral development banks during the 1960s, the Bretton Woods blueprint proved to be successful. Ultimately, what we've seen is a incredible success of movements towards markets, uh, trade between countries, movements of goods and services and investment between countries. It's removed billions, literally, of people from poverty. The 1970s and 1980s saw threats to multilateralism. The Nixon shock of 1971 resulted in raging inflationary pressures and the collapse of fixed exchange rates. The Reagan administration's America First policy introduced a resurgence of populism. But currency crises and ballooning sovereign debt posed systemic risks that required a coordinated multilateral response. Against this backdrop, two former U.S. Treasury officials, Secretary Henry Fowler and Deputy Secretary Charles Walker, a Democrat and a Republican, saw the need to mobilize leading citizens to advance the value of international economic cooperation and the critical role of the IMF and World Bank. Together with other senior officials and private sector leaders, they founded the Bretton Woods Committee in 1983. The committee convenes thought leaders to advance global dialogue on the Bretton Woods system and works to educate the public of its importance. As trusted advisor and constructive critic, the committee supports the institution's reform efforts to increase their efficiency, effectiveness, and impact. We also need to address transparency, accountability, and institutional capacity. And let's not mince words, we need to deal with the cancer of corruption. Through congressional education, letters of support, expert testimony, and policy briefings, the committee advocates that U.S. legislators support the IMF and World Bank. I wanted to thank members of the Bretton Woods Committee because so many of you have helped us uh, on uh, IDA. So, the Bretton Woods Committee members have been just a really great um, uh, ally. But I wanted, first of all, to um, thank the Bretton Woods Committee. You've been uh, always in, uh, through uh, uh, tough and, and good times, you've always been uh, of great support to the IMF, and uh, we are certainly very grateful for what you, what you do. Over the decades, the spirit of multilateralism has been tested time and again, but the system and its institutions have evolved and endured. For over 30 years, you have been tireless advocate for the Bretton Woods Institution. The work of the Bretton Woods Committee in supporting responsible American internationalism has never been more important than it will be going forward. Now, the committee's mission is more important than ever. A wave of populism, isolationism, and xenophobia has spread around the world. Trade wars and currency manipulation pose growing risks to the Bretton Woods system. This, combined with a complex set of global challenges, population growth, mass migration, climate change, mounting debt, and technological disruptions, requires a recommitment to international cooperation. A couple of things are probably part of the solution. Greater awareness and greater cooperation we must learn from history.
and protect, strengthen, and advance the system so as not to revert back to the pre Bretton Woods era. It would be a true tragedy if this extraordinary achievement, which was born out of the disasters of the interwar years, the Great Depression, the Second World War, were to be abandoned. The 75th anniversary is a timely opportunity for world leaders to reaffirm the critical role of the IMF, World Bank, and WTO. I take this to be an optimistic sign that we still can come together to solve our problems. And embrace the power of international cooperation. The three institutions that have brought us prosperity and stability in the past must exist in the future. The committee is absolutely essential. It's been impactful looking back, but I want it to be muscle-oriented moving forward. The committee's duty as the flag bearer for multilateralism will be needed well into the future. Bretton Woods is not a particular institution. It is an ideal. It is a symbol. The symbol of never-ending need for sovereign nations to work together. We urge you to join us in our mandate to continue revitalizing the spirit of Bretton Woods now and for the future.